Hey there, chances are you either clicked on an ad, someone sent you this information, or you randomly stumbled across it. Either way, I'm really excited that you're here. My name is Cody Rain, and I am the quantum strategist for AFID ID's visionary division. And if you were anything like me when you first started your business, you had no idea where to start. And if you're already successful at your business, then you may be wondering how to take your business to the next level. And if you've made it here, then that's awesome, because that is my area of expertise. Identifying exactly what is working for you and tripling down on that while eliminating the waste. Freeing up time for you to focus on the most important aspect of your business, your mindset, all while easily executing a strategic blueprint designed for your business. And you get to have a lot of fun along the way. Now, it took me years to learn this information and even longer to put it into play. So I wanna save you all that time doing research and I wanna save you all that money that you would probably invest in services that you really don't need. And I'd like to share with you three very important health habits that I use during liver failure to help me skyrocket my business overnight. Now, I just wanna throw it out there. It took me 19 years to become an overnight success. So if you think fast is gonna be in your vocabulary, when you grow your business, you need to change your vocabulary because the truth is you need to fall in love with the process. You need to find patience. You need to have the correct mindset and you need to have a blueprint to follow that guarantees that you will be successful at anything you do. Now, if hearing a statement like that automatically puts you into the, it won't work for me because my business is different or that sounds more like a false promise, then the reality is this is not for you. And before I get into that, it's really important that I share with you my story and how I ended up exactly where I am now with financial security, more time for my family, and doing exactly what I love to do, helping people just like you succeed. Rewinding just a little bit, before my liver decided to fail on me, I had lost my career of 16 years. This was my passion, it was my everyday, it was my everything. Losing my job was a massive blow because I kept thinking, what am I gonna do from here? And I happily moved to San Diego with my fiance, but it hadn't dawned on me that I haven't had to look for work for years. So what else could I possibly do just as good with absolutely zero dollars, actually thousands of dollars in debt, IRS and student loan garnishments on my bank account. I was beginning to feel like I wouldn't find work anywhere and my anxiety began to skyrocket. Plus, even if I do make some money and put that into my account, guess who gets that money? The IRS and my student loans from 2005. And I kept thinking, how am I possibly going to make enough money to get out of debt and still have money to live on in a city that I'm brand new to? And because I lost my job, I literally lost everything. I lost all my electronics, I lost my photography studio, I lost all the equipment I used in my past career. I lost my brand new car that was maybe only a year old and my two-story condo. So I did what anyone would do. I started searching for jobs online, submitting resumes left and right and taking whatever odd jobs I could. Offering photography, offering graphic design, offering to clean your dishes. Eventually it came down to a point where I just had to borrow money from family members I was barely even speaking to. And in the end, I just ended up selling everything I had left just so I had a couple dollars in my pocket. So one day, I was walking my fiance to the front door as she was heading out to work. She turns around and with those giant green eyes of hers, she lightly touches my face and stares deeply into my eyes and says, you look a little yellow today. Now to me, I just brushed it off. I looked outside, it was super bright, the sun's right there, my skin's heating up. So I just chalked it off to, eh, it's just bad lighting. Little did we know that this was the first symptom of my liver beginning to fail. Days later, I realized that I just wasn't interested in the things that I would normally be interested in. I was getting really tired, I was eating less, I was becoming more irritable, just overall lethargic and was really starting to eat at me because I believed it was just the stress I was going through. Later that day, while I was resting, I randomly got nauseous and I started to get dizzy and really disoriented. And even though I was laying down, I felt really off balance. What I didn't know at the time was that my stomach was actually slowly filling with blood from two veins that had opened up in my esophagus and this made me sicker than I've ever been in my entire life. And my body did what it naturally had to do. It had to get rid of it. So I got up, ran to the bathroom, 
and I'll save you the gruesome story, but let's just say that sink wasn't pretty. Now with me throwing up in the sink, the kids are running all over the place. They don't know what to do as their mother is frantically trying to figure out if I'm okay. She walks up behind me, puts her arms around me as I'm starting to shake. My whole body is going into basic convulsions. With one arm around my chest, she's on the phone with 911. She's making sure that I could stand up straight and giving the paramedics directions at the same time. Thankfully, paramedics arrive within five minutes and I'm standing there at the top of the stairs, shaking profusely that I can barely stand up. They get to me and they slowly walk me down the stairs and out the front door. They arrived in a super old ambulance and they loaded me inside and strapped me to this gurney. Weaving in and out of traffic, we make it to the first hospital, which was thankfully right down the street. They put me into emergency surgery where they sewed up those two veins in my throat. It actually turns out that I went into cardiac arrest twice and I ended up in ICU. And this is where they expected me to die. And as I'm lying there in ICU, still recovering from surgery, and randomly, a doctor opens the curtain, scares everyone in the room. He takes one look at me and says, this is what death looks like. He's going to die here. I can't treat him. And he walks away. And even though I just went through surgery, I'm still dying. And without any warning, they started the whole process over again. I'm back in another ambulance on the way to another hospital with more nurses and more people and things that I don't even understand. And I have literally no idea what's going on. And it wasn't until I made it to the third hospital that a doctor was even willing to take a look at me. The doctor pulls back this curtain. The room got really quiet. The only difference that in my head, it was screaming from my tinnitus. And in his foreign language, he says, Mr. Rain, you are dying. Do you understand? And I simply replied, yes. He continued with, at this rate, you're not gonna make it to the end of the week. But I do have a room that just opened up an hour ago in a research facility. And he looks me dead in the eyes from across the room and says, do you want to live? And I looked at my fiance with her eyes obviously glazed over, sitting at the foot of my bed, holding my hand, and I replied, yes. Immediately a nurse rushes in with a bunch of paperwork starting to ask me questions that I couldn't understand. Honestly, I was dying, so I had no idea what she was saying. By this time, my two stepdaughters had made it to the hospital and they're sitting in the room to the left of me. With them on my left and my fiance still holding my hand at the foot of the bed, she looks at me and says, they want to know if you're ready to fight, if you're ready to commit to saving your own life. At this point, I had already accepted the fact that I was going to die and that I did my best. And it's okay to give up now because the pain won't last that much longer. And my oldest stepdaughter with a mask pulled just below her face, with her green eyes just like her mother, she finally musters the courage while holding my hand that's still connected to the IVs and she begins to squeeze my hand as I'm about to answer the most important question of my entire life. She looks at me and says, you have to try. That was the exact moment that I realized that I had to take a leap of faith and believe that I have the strength and that I'm capable and that I didn't struggle my whole life just to die in front of people that actually love me. And I knew that I was gonna have to fight harder than I've ever fought just for the opportunity to truly live the life that I want. Still basking in uncertainty with both of my hands being held at this point, tears are welting up in my eyes, my heart is pounding, my hands are shaking, and I look at my fiance and say, yes, I want to live. And just like that, I'm off to the fourth hospital where I begin my very detailed, very specific, very methodic, very painful treatment. Now, I'll save you the gruesome and very embarrassing details about my hospital stay, but let's just say in 11 days, I went from 200 pounds to 142. It wasn't fun. And going through that process, there were numerous times where I felt, I can't do this. I'm not capable of doing this. I, I would rather be dead. Now, with all that said, that's just the beginning of my real success story. After I finally got settled at home, I kept thinking, well, what am I gonna do now? I spent six months just getting back to normal, learning how to walk again, learning how to think, learning how to do basic things just so I can feel normal again. For the sake of my girls and the pressure that I put on myself, I was in the gym every single day. 
I was getting healthier, I was getting smarter, I was getting stronger than I've ever been in my entire life. But none of that was making me money either. And this all seems so backwards to me because now I feel like a superhero, but even superheroes have jobs. Then, in the middle of a push-up, something clicked. I thought, I should just start a YouTube channel and do what all these other kids are doing. The only difference is gonna be, I'm gonna provide valuable information for your everyday life. I figured I would use my liver failure as the backstory to all my episodes while I'm teaching what I'm best at. I'll be able to take everything I make from YouTube and I'll finally be able to support my family and set us up for the future. And thinking even deeper, I'm not gonna have to do interviews because I'm gonna be Oprah rich on YouTube. I really believe that I can make this happen. And so I mapped it out. All I had to do was start a channel, understand the fundamentals, redesign the dynamics, learn how to create traffic, learn how to promote, all these very specific things that seemed really easy to me because I was in the IT field for so long. So I spent every single minute I had getting monetized on YouTube. Now granted, I was able to get monetized in only three months, where normally it takes people about five years. I actually landed in the top 100 of all of YouTube for graphic design. And then one day, I woke up and I checked my account and I realized that I wasn't really making that much money. I mean, one day it'd be $12, another day it'd be 50 cents, sometimes 15 cents. And with all this knowledge and all this understanding of exactly how to create traffic and monetize on YouTube, it seems like it's all for nothing. And traffic really started to slow down. And I had some great times with the kids in a couple of the episodes, but where's all the money? So I broke it all down. I'm spending 12 hours making an episode, and then I'm promoting that episode for 36 hours. Now, if I put that into a dollar amount, I'm spending roughly $700 a week trying to make $12 on a good day. I'm definitely upside down in what I should be making. And then one day I was working on a new episode and I randomly get a message from someone I've never met before. He asked me how I got monetized on YouTube, thinking there was some trick to it, and he wanted to buy the secret from me. And this had me feeling some type of way because I had spent thousands of hours trying to figure it out to realize that there is no trick. The only way that I would sell him this information is not just the information, but I need to teach him and take him every step of the way so he does it effectively. Otherwise, he's gonna waste his money. And so I did that. I taught him exactly how to do what I did, and he did it for himself. And with the money that I made from helping him, I invested that into online courses on how I can teach people to do exactly what I did in a more efficient way. And with these very valuable skill sets, I started to design AFID Inc. And what I didn't realize at the time is I was about to waste even more time trying to get my business off the ground. Now, don't get me wrong, Facebook ads are incredible. Click funnels is amazing and there's always a new technique tip or trick and a way to create organic traffic but those are just tools to attract dream clients and if it was as simple as mastering those tools we would all be Oprah rich by now and what I notice is that people fall into one of two categories there's the go-getters like me at the time the people that make some money sometimes and no money most of the time and then whatever they do make is spent on basic necessities and then there are the too good to be trues the people who are amazing at what they do they are absolutely rocking it in the internet marketing game making more and more money while spending less and less time doing it and so with the 2000 additional hours I spent studying successful businesses I realized that they only have a few things in place where I only had one of those three things and the truth is as long as you have these three things in place it's literally inevitable that you will become successful at anything you do remember what I mentioned that I was going to the gym every single day well the best way that I can describe this system is by sharing a story on how physical fitness relates to business growth when I first started going to the gym I was weak and I was obsessed over getting bigger biceps for reasons I didn't even understand I was under the belief system that you have to lift heavy weights in order to get bigger arms. It was probably my fifth time in the gym that week. All of a sudden, an older woman, much smaller than me, smells like roses. She must have just got there. She walks up to me and she grabs my arm very lightly and she says, I see you in the gym every day and you're always working on your arms. Have you ever tried a superset? 
I told her that I had just never heard of it. She told me to drop my 60 pound bar and replace it with a 20 pound bar. And I gave her the look. Now, in my head, I was thinking she was crazy. And she says to me, the reason you aren't getting the results you want is because you're focusing on the wrong part of your biceps. She continued with, I'm gonna make that 20 pound bar feel like 100 pounds. She says, widen your stance, take your time, and only go half the distance before returning the bar to its original position. I really want you to focus on the muscles surrounding your biceps. And at first it was super easy. I mean, seriously easy. And she goes, now that you've done those seven reps, I want you to bring the bar to your chin and then go back down only halfway before returning the bar back to your chin. Now this is when that 20 pound bar is starting to feel like that 60 pound bar that I just put away. Seven more of those and I was done. Now I'm obviously looking exhausted, veins are popping out of my head and she screams at me, wait, hold it at your chin. I want you to do seven regular curls now. I simply couldn't do it. The bar was just too heavy. And then she says, everyone believes that you have to lift heavy weights in order to get bigger arms, but bigger isn't the same as stronger. Now, with that said, the internet marketing game has people building muscle in all the wrong areas of their business. And I know this because I spent thousands of hours buying into the convoluted truths and misconceptions that I was just too desperate to see through. Now, as I mentioned, there were three things that successful businesses had that I didn't. One, which is what I had at the time, and that was the ability to create high quality traffic and leads 24 seven. Two, what I didn't have was a system in place to convert that traffic into high paying clients that happily come back the next day. And three, a blueprint. I did not have a roadmap to follow every single day to guarantee my business becomes a success. And systems like this are great if you're looking to generate more leads or high ticket clients, high quality traffic, you're looking to increase your profits or at least increase your prices, or if you wanna reduce your workload by implementing automation, and most importantly, you want to attract your dream clients and customers ready to pay you now for exactly what you're worth. And in a nutshell, that's exactly what AFID ID does for our clients every single day. And we, just like you, are looking for more of our dream clients. People that enjoy expanding their consciousness and injecting a piece of themselves into every aspect of their business. And that's what we love to do. Taking a struggling system and turning it into a profiting one using exactly what you already have in place. And we'd love to work with you in designing a system for your business if you meet the following criteria. If you want to generate more high quality traffic and leads and don't want a penny pinch and are ready to buy now. If you want to improve your sales conversions and get more people to buy from you today without lingering that maybe, kinda, sorta, perhaps, I'm not sure, let me think about it state. Or if you want to dramatically increase your prices, attracting higher caliber clients so you can make more money with less headache and if that sounds like you then it's as simple as filling out a free online application and picking a time on my calendar so you and I can have a direct conversation about how we can take your business to the next level now working with me and the AFID ID team is not cheap but most of our clients get a complete return on their investment within the first month and we end up working for years together because of how fast we're able to generate results now let me tell you who this doesn't work well for people who make excuses and justify their failures. And if you're not serious about doubling, tripling, or even quadrupling in the next 12 months, this definitely isn't for you. It's definitely not for people who are willing to continue struggling because they've learned how to manage the frustration. And most importantly, it's not for people who are unwilling to take a good, hard look at themselves and accept the fact that they need to take responsibility for their own actions and they may be contributing to the pitfalls in their success so far. But if you are ready to step up and you're ready to commit and you're ready to design your future based around what you've already got going for you, then we are definitely interested in working with you. Honestly, there are some people that we just can't help 
and that's okay. We'll go ahead and let you know. We'll be 100% honest, and we will point you in the perfect direction that's geared more towards where you are as a company. So all you have to do is submit your application, and before you start working up a whole bunch of social anxiety and talk yourself out of it, we're just gonna review your information, and don't worry, we're not judging you. We just wanna make sure that you're ready to step up and commit to do the work that is necessary to grow your business to the next level. And remember, liver failure and cardiac arrest did not stop me from becoming a success. So trust me, I know how you may be feeling. And when we're done, you will either be a fit for us and we will happily extend an invitation to work alongside the AFIT ID team or not. Either way, you're going to receive insanely valuable information and absolute clarity on where you are as a business and how you can take your business to the next level with or without our help. And to be completely honest, a strategy session with me is probably one of the most valuable 30 minutes you will ever invest into your business, at least this year. So if you're geared up and ready to go and you're ready to get out or stay out of debt while taking your business to the next level, you want the confidence and the know-how to prevent issues in your life as well as your business. You want to become the absolute best version of yourself while skyrocketing your company. And you want to develop an unstoppable mindset that guarantees you will become successful at every single thing you touch. Then go ahead and submit your application now and let's see if we're a good fit for doing business. We'll talk soon.